The word polymer may seem like something that is created by people in white coats in labs all over the world, but this is not the case. Polymers are growing out of our heads as hair, the wool on sheep and the cellulose on plants. Polymers are only long, large molecules made up of monomers, smaller units, and found everywhere in the world around us. So if we have a polymer growing in our bodies and out of our heads, then creating a mo polymer to be used in the body is only a natural step forward in the biological world. These polymers created are biocompatible, therefore compatible with living cells, organs or systems in the body and pose no risk or little risk of injury, toxicity or rejection by the immune system. So what might they be used for? Well, they can be applied from cardiac surgery to drug delivery and from hip operations to the tiniest stitch. They can last decades or only a matter of minutes. It all depends on the chemistry behind the polymer. Ever heard of a hydrogen bond? A polymer that is able to form hydrogen bonds makes the material tougher and stronger. It is a key part of the characteristic of the polymer. This is an example of hydrogen bonds. The oxygen atom has two lone pairs on them, and the hydrogen from the amide is slightly positive because the electrons have been drawn to the electronegative nitrogen. Therefore, the hydrogen is attracted to the oxygen on another polymer, forming a bond and creating tougher material. Polymer characteristics also depends on the side chains of the polymer. The very basic polymer you can get is polyethene, made from ethene. It is widely used and is very flexible as hydrogen is a very small atom that does not create steric hindrance so the molecule can move easily. If larger side chains are added, e.g. with more bonds to the carbon, Steric hindrance is increased, causing the polymer to become less flexible, shown here. There are two long-term uses of polymers I'm going to discuss. Polymers are used in heart valve replacement surgery. There are four heart valves in the human heart, and they are used to regulate blood flow through the heart, depending on the pressure. Valves open when the pressure on one side is greater than the other. There are three types of valves. Mechanical valves, which use metal and polymers to create the valve. Bioprosthetic valves, which use pig's valves, which are very similar to human valves. Or biochemical, inert synthetic polymers used to create these. They can be custom made to fit the patient Polyurethanes are a type of thermoplastic which are very strong, abrasion resistant and biocompatible. They are used to make some valves. They are made by reacting an alcohol with an isocyanate. Alcohol is a carbon chain with an OH functional group. Isocyanate is a carbon chain with a functional group of nitrogen double bonded to a carbon, double bonded to an oxygen. This needs a catalyst. For this reaction, a DABCO is used. The lone pairs of electrons on the tertiary amide are attracted to the slightly positive hydrogen in the alcohol due to the electrons being attracted to the electronegative oxygen. When a bond is formed, the nitrogen has a positive charge and the oxygen a negative charge. The oxygen then has many electrons so donates them to the carbon on the isocyanate which is electron poor due to the two electrons electronegative elements on either side. This breaks the double bond between the nitrogen and the carbon as the carbon can never have more than four bonds. This makes the nitrogen have a negative charge and the oxygen a positive charge. The negative nitrogen therefore donates its electrons to the hydrogen on the alcohol group, breaking the bond with the DABCO and forming a carbonate functional group. This reaction can continue to make larger polyurethanes. 
The polyurethanes are used to make artificial heart valves. This is, this is for elastothane and puracell. Polymers are also used in artificial hip joints. A hip replacement takes place when the hip joint is worn down. It is replaced with an artificial one. The top part of the femur is removed and the socket in the hip joint is hollowed out. A tube is hollowed down into the femur and a titanium alloy shaft with a ball is attached at the top. A polymer is then used for the socket so that the ball of the shaft fits into the socket. It's permeable to allow bone to diffuse around it. Ultra-high molecular weight polyethene has been used for hip and knee replacements for over 40 years. Ultra-high molecular weight polyethene can have from 3 million to 6 million monomers in it, compared to the 5,000 units that high-density polyethene has. It's made up of a simple structure shown here. The molecule is very flexible and can overlap. Van der Faals forces are formed between the molecules and due to the amount of monomers there are, forms a very strong plastic. Since 1998, high, highly cross-linked ultra-molecular weight polyethene have been used. This is when a gamma or electric beam is shone at the molecule. The hydrogen atoms are knocked out of the polyethene and the carbons are free to bond to other carbons, causing cross-linking and making a stronger polyethene. This increases the wear resistance, a major problem with hip replacements. Biodegradable plastics are used for drug delivery and stitches. Stitches have been used for thousands of years to help heal wounds, first used by the Egyptians for mummies. The latest use is to have biodegradable stitches which degrade in the body so no need to undergo further surgery. An example of polymers used are polyglycogen. Due to the ester linkage of, in the polymer, it breaks down when certain enzymes and water is present. This leaves the monomer, which then breaks down into water and carbon dioxide. These lose their strength after two weeks and are fully degradable after four weeks. Drug delivery is a new area of biodegradable polymers. This is an ever greater need to get a drug to a specific area of the body without it affecting other areas. One area used is using a swell controllable polymer. This is when water penetrates the matrix of the polymer. The polymer swells due to the water not being able to diffuse in. This causes the glass transition state to drop, allowing the polymer to become rubbery and the drug to diffuse out. Hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is a type of swell controllable polymer and is encased in a layer of Im water impermeable coatings within the tablet. There are many eth ethical issues when using synthetic polymers in science. They can also help with ethical issues, such as not having to use pigs for heart valves. There's a case of using polymers as spare parts for people, instead of allowing nature to take its course. These are issues which are thought about carefully before allowing the operations to take place. The quality of life of these people may be increased by using this polymer. There is a huge future for polymers in, bio in the biochemical world. Many areas of research are still being worked in with very promising results. One form is using tissue engineering. Using the graph to form the tissue using carbon nanotechnology, shown here, is also used to form the graft for the heart transplants. This could be essential in the future. Thanks for listening.